with some wolves, got the pack and it's boof Wish you would pick the slack cause it's loose Get the bag, pop the tag, then we move Smoke Perp was a name that everyone in the rap scene knew just a few years ago Collaborating with huge artists like Travis Scott, Chief Keef X, and of course his good friend Lil Pump, even having wrote I Love It for Pump and Kanye, again Smoke Perp was undoubtedly a rising star in hip-hop. Until he wasn't. Following SoundCloud classics like his debut commercial single Audi in 2017, Smoke Perp would instead later become one of the biggest jokes on the internet. First, his albums were flopping hard, literally only selling 5k in first week sales. And second, he was clowned all over social media after giving one of the worst freestyles we've ever heard. I'm a motherfucking boner. I got a motherfucking boner. Yeah. I'll post a picture and like all my comments just say boner. Limelight <laughs> boner, boner, boner. I'm a boner. Limelight boner, boner, boner. I was like, damn. And then, of course, Perp would go viral back in April of this year, but again, not for good reasons. A clip of his show in Michigan would quickly rack up millions of views online, showing Perp on stage performing to a crowd of only about 10 people. So how does an artist like Smoke Perp go from working with Kanye West and Travis Scott to now falling off as fast as he did? In this video, we'll first see how this high school dropout was able to rise to the top of the SoundCloud scene, as well as then see exactly how each misstep Smoke Perp has made in his career has led to someone with so much potential to fade into the forgotten. As we take a look at what happened to Smoke Perp. Now, some would argue that Smoke Perp never even had any potential. After first starting to make beats in high school, Perp would soon begin rapping over them himself since no one else was interested in buying his beats. He would post his first song to SoundCloud in 2015, before quickly deleting it due to its poor quality. The second song Perp posted was his track Live Off a Lick which featured a verse from fellow Florida rapper XXXTentacion. This was also around the time that Smoke Perp met his good friend Lil Pump. I would go into a little more detail here, but they've both said they forgot how they met. And Perp was actually the one who persuaded Lil Pump to first try rapping. Me and him would be freestyling and shit, and then, like, in the car and shit, smoking blood, and then bro was like, man, you start rapping. I'm like, what? You start rapping? Fuck, like, all that time, like, just do it. You hard, and then I just started doing that shit. Then, after multiple tracks together like Broke My Wrist and Smoke My Dope, Pump and Smoke Perp quickly began blowing up in the SoundCloud scene. Known for their self-dubbed ignorant yet catchy style of music, or I guess I should say ignorant, as well as their reckless personalities. I haven't even ate breakfast, nigga. I'll pop his hand right now. <laughs> oh my oh God. shit. Hey, Perp. Oh my yeah. god, hey, most socially smashed, irresponsible hey, thing I've filmed in a while. I just made it, I just made it suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> then in March of 2017, Smoke Perp would sign his first record deal, a joint venture with Alamo and Interscope Records. After a few big solo tracks such as Ski Mask and Glock in My Benz, Perp was gaining more and more attention by the day and it was only a matter of time before he signed. So now, with the help of a major label backing him, Smoke Perp's debut commercial single, Audi, would drop a few months later. Shout out to Todd, Tom mm. Moskowitz, like, he saw, so he, he didn't even sign me because of Ski Mask, he signed, he signed me because he heard the, the preview to Audi, Audi wasn't out yet. Really? Yeah, he didn't sign me because of Ski, he, saw, he heard the preview to Audi and he signed me and then he told me that he's a smash. And Todd Moshkowitz of Alamo Records was correct. With its extremely hard-hitting distorted bass and simple catchy lyrics, Audi is a SoundCloud classic in my books, and still Perp's biggest solo hit to this day. In fact, his 2017 debut mixtape Dead Star is also one of my favorite projects from that early SoundCloud scene. I wouldn't necessarily say it's the best, but this mixtape is exactly what I think of when it comes to quote SoundCloud rap including features from Travis Scott, Chief Keef, Juicy J, and of course Lil Pump, Deadstar would debut at number 42 on the Billboard 200. 
marking Perp's first entry on the charts. And along with getting a verse from Travis Scott on the fire track Fingers Blue, rumors would also begin spreading that Smoke Perp had signed to Travis's Cactus Jack records. I want y'all niggas to be the loudest and welcome to the newest member of the Cactus Jack motherfucking gang. Everybody at this motherfucker make some motherfucking noise at the top of your motherfucking lungs for Smoke Perp! Perp would receive his Cactus Jack chain and seem to have officially joined Travis and his crew. However, this would not last very long. And now, as it turns out, Perp was never actually signed to Cactus Jack. I was never really, like, signed to Cactus Jack on paper. Uh-huh. It was just more on something like, we was fucking with each other. Like, it was like, you know what I'm saying, gang shit. But Smoke Perp was able to keep the momentum rolling into 2018 being named an XXL freshman, releasing a collab mixtape Bless Yo Trap with Murda Beats, his highest charting project yet at number 40, as well as also writing the iconic track I Love It for Lil Pump and Kanye West. Basically this nigga is called Pump, blah, 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 blah. He said, wanted to make a song about this and I just wrote a song. And it just happened in the studio and then he yeah, ended up performing it? Randomly, it randomly just came out. And he was like, yo, this shit you wrote came out, blah, blah, blah. However, this would prove to be the peak of Smoke Perp's career to this day, as now is really where the fall-off begins. Similar to his sidekick Lil Pump, this was about the time when Perp's antics became more talked about than his actual music. And in turn, these antics would then make Smoke Perp the punching bag of SoundCloud rap. Starting in April of 2018, J. Cole released his new album K.O.D. And on the final track titled 1985, despite not name dropping anyone specifically, Cole would send a message to these up and coming rappers. One day them kids that's listening gon' grow up and get too old for that shit that made you blow up. Now your show's looking like cause they don't show up. Ahem. <clears throat> Which unfortunately means the money slow up. Again, Cole did not name drop any rappers specifically, but it's very likely that this verse was aimed at Lil Pump after his unreleased diss track Fuck J. Cole surfaced online. This was Pump's response after hearing 1985. Wow, you get so much props, you diss a 17 year old. <laughs> Lame ass jit. Then about a week later, Smoke Perp would lead a Fuck J. Cole chant at one of his shows. So then, following the beef with Cole, Perp would then move on to another artist, Russ. Back in September of 2017, Russ would cause some major controversy when he was seen wearing an anti-drug shirt which reads, How much Xanax and lean do you have to do before you realize you're a fucking loser? And the beef would start when Russ then took to Twitter three days after Lil Peep died from an overdose, Tweeting, abusing Xanax and other drugs in private because you're depressed is one thing. Constantly recording yourself doing drugs and putting up pics and videos of doing it is when you start choosing to publicly glorify it and make it an image. To which Smoke Perp tweeted back, telling him to shut the fuck up and calling him a bitch for trying to make an example out of someone who died only a few days prior. But this was just the beginning. Perp would make Russ's sister his profile picture on Instagram. While I find it kind of funny, clearly Russ did not. As in classic Russ fashion, he then got some of his goons to jump smoke Perp. Those two kids, those kids, those are clowns, bro. Did you see him at any festival? Did you? Yeah, we we've caught we caught one of them at a festival. That motherfucker knows what time it is, bro. Which one? Smoke Perp or Lil Ben? I'm gonna tell you right now. If they respond, they know what time it is, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm putting it to you like this. We got we got video too. And of course, the video would leak. In the footage you're seeing here, Russ's crew is allegedly jumping Smoke Perp as he is returning from the bathroom backstage at a festival. So then, 2019 was another rough year for Smoke Perp. After a rocky start including beefing with Lil Pump over not getting writing credits on some of Pump's biggest hits, it was in the month of April when maybe the most iconic moment of Smoke Perp's career happened. His infamous Tim Westwood freestyle. This is many I live my life. This is many I live my life. This is many I live my life. So the begin I ain't living tight. This freestyle went viral all over the internet. 
Perp went on Tim Westwood and spit a 40-minute freestyle over some of the most famous instrumentals of all time. Which, for one, 40 minutes is crazy. So I mean, you can't expect it all to be fire. Now I'm guessing he was trying to be like Juice World, who also did an hour-long freestyle on Tim Westwood a few months prior. Juice World, I just tied you. I just tied you for the one-hour freestyle. Do I feel a battle up in this room? There's there's an hour. He did an hour. I did an hour. We might both have to come here at the same time and go back and forth. But let's just say Juice World's was much better. A simple indicator is that Juice's video still has the comments left on, which isn't the case for Smoke Perps. However, according to Perp, he was only planning on doing an interview there and not a freestyle, and also blamed the horrible bars on the edibles he took before. Man, nigga, nigga was clowning me, man, for that freestyle. Damn, a nigga can't even have fun and fuck around, bro. Like, damn, nigga. I, I personally, like, man, does it, did that shit even seem serious? Niggas was acting like I was dead serious on that shit, man. Like, it was... But is the saying true that all publicity is good publicity? Well, in the case of Smoke Perp here, not so much. Perp would drop his debut studio album, Dead Star 2, a few months later in December of 2019. And despite an impressive feature list of big artists like Trippy Red, Denzel Curry, Moneybag Yo, Lil Skies, and Ty Dolla Sign, this album would only peak at number 137 on the Billboard 200. There was also supposed to be a Kanye West feature on Dead Star 2 as well. But if you can remember back at this time in 2019, Kanye was in the process of changing his public image with his Christian faith. He pretty much just told me like, yo, he's not really cursing and shit. Like, he's not, he's not, he like, he really doesn't even perform his old songs no more. Like, he does like Jesus Walks. Yeah. And then like, if he does perform his old songs, he, he changed the lyrics. But eventually, the track would leak. Despite only a demo and still unfinished, No Problem sounds like the hit that Smoke Perp needed to revive his music career. I can get this shit no problem. I can get this shit no problem. Even Batman needed Robin. Even Jordan needed Robin. I can make a bitch no problem. Glock to see so problems. I need more money, less problems. And I hit it big with no gun. Dead Star 2 would also include the song Audi 2, a sequel to his 2017 hit. As an attempt to reel back in some of his fans who had left, Audi 2 was met with mixed reviews from fans and critics. Perp describes Dead Star 2 as his best work, and I would say it's definitely an improvement from his past projects. It is really interesting. Smoke Perp's music has improved the more he's fell off. Of course, those early distorted SoundCloud bangers will always be iconic for that era, but as time's gone on, Smoke Perp has only gotten better at making music. Not only rapping, but Perp still produces on almost every song he puts out. Most of the songs you hear, like, even if it says another producer, I produced on it too. I just don't be crediting myself. Like, I'd rather just get the check. Like, you know what I'm saying? Which is why what happened next is even more surprising. Smoke Perp would release his second album, Florida Jit, in the summer of 2020. And again, even though this album also had some big name features, Florida Jit only sold 5K in first week sales. Everybody do the flop! The album, of course, did not chart either. And Smoke Perp was once again clowned all over social media. Perp's wave had now seemed to be over along with his partner Lil Pump who was also rapidly decreasing in popularity it just seemed like people had moved on from everything that made them famous in 2017 2021 was another forgetful year for Smoke Perp he released his 6 track EP titled Psycho which also saw Perp get called out for stealing the lyrics and flow of an unreleased Juice World song Rockstar. It does sound very similar, and Smoke Perp has now been accused of biting flows multiple times, from Juice World to Playboy Cardi, and more recently, Yeet. So then, here in this year, 2022, Smoke Perp would go viral once more back in April, but again, not for good reasons. 
This clip here of Perp's show in Pontiac, Michigan would quickly make its rounds all over the internet. At first, there seems to be a small crowd while he's performing, but then as we pan over, we see a totally empty room. As part of the We Outside tour, this show took place in the Pike Room of a venue called the Crowfoot. The Pike Room has a capacity of 250 people. But judging from that viral clip, there were maybe 20 fans in attendance. This was of course a terrible look for Smoke Perp. I do have to give him some credit though because he did play the show, regardless of the crowd's size. As Perp later commented on Instagram, Yeah, there was a show that was pretty empty that I didn't have to do, but I'ma give my fans a show regardless. I wouldn't be here without them. However, the very next tour stop in Cleveland was canceled a few nights later, as Perp was a no-show after again only about 20 people bought tickets. Despite Smoke Perp having over 4 million followers on Instagram, the number one sign of how popping an artist is is how many tickets they are selling for their shows. And clearly here with Smoke Perp, this is a huge sign that his time may be passed. With now only 2 million monthly listeners on Spotify, there isn't nearly as much hype around Perp as there once was. Just a few years ago, I actually saw Smoke Perp come out at the Lyrical Lemonade show in Chicago back in October, check out my vlog, and even though the crowd was pretty lit when Perp came out to Audi, you know it's not a good sign when Cole Bennett has to preface your performance and make sure the crowd doesn't boo you. And I'll give a fuck what the internet says, but we show everyone love and we pay respect to every person that walked across this stage once before and made this fucking cart what it is today. You hear me? Yes, sir. Let's go. However, not long into his set, Perp would jump into the crowd and actually swing on a fan. Not only super unprofessional, but I think we also left that type of behavior behind at concerts. On one hand, you have to feel a little bad for Smoke Perp. It's not like he did something super tragic that warranted this new trend to hate on everything he does. It's just another example that people like to dogpile on someone who is struggling. And as I mentioned earlier, Perp's music has only improved through the years. It's sad that people let that freestyle speak for the rest of his songs. However, on the other hand, I think we all saw this coming. Smoke Perp simply isn't an artist that is built for longevity. He had his moment in the spotlight and then frankly faded out over time. In the spotlight, uh, I don't really, really want the limelight. Niggas put me in the motherfucking limelight. Niggas put me in the motherfucking limelight. You can move me out the motherfucking limelight. Cause I really, really, really want to blow pipes. Like, yeah, yeah. But can Smoke Perp make a comeback? Well, if you ask me, it's going to be really tough. As we just covered, Perp's reputation is currently in the mud. From the Tim Westwood freestyle, to only selling 5k with his latest album, and then going viral for nobody showing up at his shows. Why should people care about Smoke Perp? Why should people care? They shouldn't. I'm trash. However, in the age of TikTok, as we just saw with Lil Yachty, for example, all it takes is one song to catch on on the app and then you're popular again. Smoke Perp has proved that he's still capable of making catchy bangers that people like to turn up to, but at the same time he's also proved that he is not an album type of artist. Like every rapper, Perp's career has definitely seen its ups and downs. I would honestly love to see him make a comeback. But I just think as his wave died down and as time has moved on, his contemporaries surpassed him tremendously, which has left many fans to consider Smoke Perp's career a wash at this point. I don't want friends, I want Audis. Smoking on booth in his Maui. 